Thank you. I'm uh, Bob Rack. I'm a coordinator of environmental technology here at BCC. And it's very uh, important that we talk about water and we talk about rainwater harvesting. Because if we think about it, you know, we hear a lot about gasoline and about fossil fuels and about energy and everything. Well, we can live without, without any of that, but we can't live more than a few days without water. And water is becoming a very critical commodity on the planet. As our population grows, you know, we have the same water here on the planet that we had when the dinosaurs walked around. It's been shifted around in many times, but through recycling, and we have a limited amount. And if we think about water in terms of how much water is available to us, we think about, you know, we, the Earth is the water planet. You know, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink in some places. And so when you look at it, we have about 97.5% of the water on the earth is in the oceans, which isn't readily available to us. That other two and a half percent is the fresh water, but about two percent of that is locked up in glaciers. And that's only leaving about a half a percent or so of the, the remaining fresh water that's readily available to us. And water is becoming, there's conflicts over water right now in parts of the world. You know, we're, we're lucky in this area. We have an ample supply of water. You know, we're happy to, we turn on the water, on the faucets and water runs. But if you think of globally, there's over a billion people who don't have access to clean water. And about two and a half billion people who don't have access to sanitation. So when we're looking at it, we're blessed here and we take it for granted that we can turn on the tap. And I teach environmental technology, so I always ask students when they come in and we talk about high school, too, how many people have, have used the services of an environmental technician today? I hope so. I hope you, I hope you took a shower or I hope you uh, brushed teeth or something like that because if you did, you used the services of an environmental technician because they're out there all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, working to clean the water so that you can drink clean water and also cleaning our wastewater and sending it back to the water, hopefully in a pretty good condition so that it can be recycled again. Because all we do in wastewater treatment plants is generally recreate what nature has in store. So today, I want to talk about one of the ways that we can conserve water. And it's a very simple way of doing it. It's nothing new. People have been doing this for probably thousands of years or more, hundreds of thousands of years. And one of the things when we're looking at harvesting rainwater, one thing that we have to uh, think about is you know, if we're looking to take it off our house or whatever, we have to think about the roofing material that's on our, our roof. Because not all of it is suitable depending on what you want to do with your roof, uh, what you want to do with your water. If you're planning on, and some people actually capture their rainwater and put it through a system and drink it, and, other and use it for vegetable gardens. Well, if you're going to do that, the typical type of roof that you should have, the terracotta tiles on the roof. You can have wood, wood shingles that aren't treated with anything. You can have cement tiles. Uh, also uh, metal roofs that are, have, been, have an epoxy paint on them. And actually copper is pretty good also for roof. But a lot of people have asphalt shingles on their roof. And uh, I've looked into that and you know, you see some say, well, it's okay to do it. You see others, no, no, you can't do it. Well, I saw one that came right from the producer of uh, the, uh, a good amount of asphalt roofing, GAF manufacturing, and their 
recommendation was it's not suitable if you're going to use it for drinking or for watering plants and uh, watering your vegetables. Landscaping, it's fine. You know, you, it's going to go on the ground anyway, so you know you can use it for uh, those purposes. Another thing that we want to think about is how much rainwater can we collect? Because it's when we think about it, we can get a lot of rainwater, a lot of storage, very quickly. Because if we look at if we look at our roof, how we can plan uh, what what rainwater that we're going to collect. If we look at the roof, we're not going to basically look at what the total surface area of the roof is. We've got to look at the angle of the roof. So if we look at it from above, that's going to be the surface where the rain is going to fall. So if we take you know, this distance, just make some uh, easy measurements, say this was 50 feet across here and it was, so if that's 50 feet and say that's another, say 20 feet just for easy numbers. Then we look at the surface area that that creates. So we have 20 times 50, so there's a thousand square feet. of surface area that's going to collect water. Now, say where I'm just going to use a inch of rain that falls on that, because we've had, you know, the last few weeks we've had some pretty good, we had three inches of rain or more the other day, although we've been mostly still in a drought in this area, but we can collect it quickly and have it. So if I have a thousand square feet and I look at one inch of rain, if I divide that by 12, I think it's 0.083, but I'll check it out just to make sure. Yeah, 0.083. That's how many, that's feet. So now if I want to figure out the volume of water, I multiply that times 0.083 feet, so I'm just going to move this over three places because I'm multiplying it by a thousand, so one, two, three. So that equals 83 cubic feet of water that we have. Now, for every cubic foot of water is 7.48 gallons. So if I take 83 feet cubed times 7.48 gallons per foot cubed. And a quick calculation here. That's 620 gallons of water that we can collect from probably one day, one rainfall. So it's an amazing amount of water that, and that's just from, from one house that we can get if you have your gutters going to the right area. So it's, this is how we can plan how much water we have and if we want to store a lot of water, and some people store a lot of water. They'll use it for a farm and I'll, I'll show you a couple of quick videos on uh, some of the ways that people are using rainwater, and then I'll show you how to uh, make one yourself, a simple one. Harvesting rainwater or rainwater capture has been around for centuries. The first pioneers that came to this country depended on rainwater and cisterns to help them establish homes all across this land. And today there's many nations in the world that are very dependent upon rainwater as they're so source of water that they have to drink. Here there's lots of renewed interest in rainwater for a number of different reasons. One of those is the additives that we have and what it takes to make our water safe to drink.
As our population grows, are we going to have enough water supply the water needs for this next generation and generations to come? Then as we become more conservation minded, it's a way that we can reduce our water bill. And at the same time, we can capture this water and use it on our landscapes, or in this case, I use it for my home. So rainwater has a number of different options, so a number of different ways that we can collect it and use it, whether for our livestock, for our wildlife, for our plants, or for our homes. So water is very valuable to us, and as we can look at rainwater as an option to a very critical situation that we have. A good way to start out in collecting rainwater is with rain barrels, and there are a number of them available in different sizes and different price ranges. However, I want to show you one today that we're going to make out of just an old trash can. This is one that we've just taken the lid off it. We're going to change it. We're going to insert a faucet through it. Uh, and then I'll show you the parts that we're going to use. Well, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and have an overflow where you can go ahead and cut a two-inch hole, uh, insert a two-inch PVC pipe, and this here we put a screen on the bottom to keep the mosquitoes out, and we can just go ahead and attach that to the side. We also want to connect the faucet here at the bottom uh, using a low washer and just using a nut and tighten that real tight so that it doesn't leak. And then we, when we are going ahead and connecting it to our house, if we have an existing downspout, we go ahead and cut the center out of this lid and insert it, and then take the PVC pipe from our gutter and then divert it into this tank. The good thing about it is that it is light tight, so I don't have to worry about algae or mosquitoes being a problem in here. How if we're not able to connect it to a downspout, you don't have the gutters, then you can go ahead and take this lid and you can cut the center out of it, and then we can replace it and put a screen. And that way the mosquitoes and other trash can't get into that tank from the outside. And then just place it under the eave of the house so the water will come through the center. And then we can use this water, just catch it with a bucket from here and go into one of our plants or the things that we want to use, or we can connect it to a water hose and go to a specific place. Or in, like in this case, we have it connected to a, a, a small dog water or pet water so we can have a float on the inside of it so we can water our dog or cat or for our wildlife. But each one of these is a rain barrel. It's a good way to start out in collecting water and conserving that water and getting you very conservation minded. Rainwater has lots of different benefits that so we can use the water and use it for lots of different purposes. But also collecting that rainwater has a way of also alleviating some problems. And that's what we have here in this facility. This is a livestock show barn that our kids are using. We continually add it on to those facilities, increasing the amount of impervious area that we have here. And in doing that, we increase the amount of water that runs off or the amount of storm water increases. And in this site, we have a very low site. And so all that water just stands here, creating a problem for our, our people as they try to park, as they try to move here. So to alleviate that problem, we've included a rainwater capture system and a collection tank. So we're using that water, catching it off of this building, diverting it into that tank, and then we're using that water not only to irrigate the facilities around here in our landscape, but also to provide water for our livestock and be able to wash them whenever we have our livestock show. At this facility, we have a unique situation. The problem is that the roof of our building is the same height as the top of our collection tank. And so the water needs in some way to move downhill by gravity, and we don't have that situation here. So what we've done is from our gutters, we have a conversion that goes to a four inch PVC pipe. And then from there, the water is being moved on down through our pipe down underground. So it's out under the way of all of our kids and everyone at this facility. Then the tank that's underground, we have an overflow that's connected to that same four inch pipe uh, that diverts this water out as this tank gets full if we have too heavy a rain event. In this tank, as the water moves in, we have a third horse power sump pump that as the water level rises up, that the float comes on and as it kicks on the pump and there it pumps the water into our 10,000 gallon collection tank. This is a 10,000 gallon uh, corrugated steel collection tank that has a vinyl liner on the inside. Also has a sand floor on this rather than a concrete or wooden floor on it. The sand is held in place by rocks that we have as well as the cross ties. Once this tank is full, then this is our overflow that's on the back side that allows the water then to move away from our building. During the summer months, much of our water goes to our landscape. In some cities, as much as 50% of that annual water used is in our landscape. 
And so if we can reduce the amount of water by capturing that water and collecting it in a storage tank as we're doing in this facility, then we can reduce the amount of water that we use uh, in our landscape and reduce the total amount of water that we're dependent on a municipal water supply. Here in this facility, we're using gravity flow, or just a gravity pressure to push that water through this one half inch poly pipe that we have all connected through here. And then from it, we have connections that are going to each individual plant. I have an emitter on each plant, and I can adjust it based on how much water that plant needs, whether it needs a whole lot or needs very little. Thus, by conserving water and using the amount of water that each plant needs to do its best. Rainwater harvesting can be used in our homes as well as smaller areas where we need less water. And in this location, we're looking at a hunting cabin for our hunters that only use this during a certain times of the year. With this building here, we have about 1,500 square foot of roof, and we're catching water off of this building and running through our downspouts and then through our lines that's running to a central point where we have what's called a poor man's roof washer. This catches a first debris and trash that would come from our roof then once this is full, then the water is diverted into our tank. We have here a thousand gallon polyethylene tank that uh, when it is full, then it, water runs out through this overflow. This prevents water from backing up through our lines and up into our gutter and putting excess pressure on them. Connecting from our gutters to our downspouts is sometimes a very difficult situation and it makes it also difficult to convert Okay, that's uh, one of the uh, ways you can see how it can be used quite to get, capture a tremendous amount of water that can be used for a lot of reasons. As he goes on, he, he actually shows he's got a, a treatment system in his house. So he actually treats the water and drinks it from the uh, water. That's you know, not always recommended you know, without you know, having the proper treatment and testing the water to make sure it's, it's safe before you do that. Because there are a lot of things when you think about that are on the roof that come down, birds, droppings, and everything that go on the roof and get washed in so you, you can have a, a problem with uh, coliform bacteria in there. So before you are even planning on drinking it, you know, it would have to be, go through a, a very uh, good system to clean it. One of the things you also mentioned about was pressure. And if you wanted to think of pressure, one of the things you all, always have to think of in order to get water pressure, all we're basically concerned about is the height of the water column. So if you want a lot of pressure, you know, it's better to have, you know, a tall, narrow area because this, the height of the water alone, it doesn't matter what the surface area is, it's only the height of the water that's going to determine the pressure that you have. And it's easy to use a uh, formula, pressure is equal to 0.43 times the height in feet. And this will give you pressure in pounds per square inch. So we can calculate that. The higher our water volume, the greater the pressure that we can produce. Now I want to show you another kind of approach to how they collect it. I'm John Marcocchio, Managing Director of SunSource Technologies. We're based in Jamaica. We do uh, solar pumping systems for agricultural purposes, for aquaculture purposes, and for pool pumping system, along with power supply systems to residences and small commercial installations. Today we're at Chippenham Park Farms. Chippenham Park Farms is in the hills of Jamaica, high up in the hills. It's the largest egg producing facility in Jamaica owned by Caribbean broilers. We have created here a water harvesting pond. We had a hole dug in the field and we have lined it with BTL liner. It's one continuous sheeting, one piece of liner so it doesn't leak. Warranted for 25 years against perforation and UV degradation. The water in the pond is supplied from rainwater falling on the roofs of the chicken houses. Uh, the chicken houses are all guttered, and you can see behind me two pipes from two different chicken houses that are running in here, so when the rain falls, not only is the pond the catchment area, but also the roofs, 
and we fill the we fill the pond with the rainwater. The capacity of this system is about 800,000 gallons, uh, a lot of storage. We're in the hills of, of Jamaica, St. Anne, high up in the hills. It's normally very inclement weather. It's not a lot of sunshine. We have a re relatively little sun, comparatively speaking, still have lots of sun. And what, we, what happens here is we have a positive displacement submersible pump that's suspended in the pond from the float. And that pump pumps no matter what amount of sunlight is out there. A little or a lot, we pump, and just the, the rate of pumping varies. And we supply 4,000 gallons a day on average up to storage tanks that are up by the residents, the farm residents at the top of the hill. So the system first and foremost supplies the residents with their water. From there on, it gravity feeds down and supplies water to the entire farm. Series of chicken houses extending as far as a half a kilometer away, and the gravity feed system just supplies storage tanks at each chicken house all the way down. From the time that we put the system in in excess of two years ago, they have never ever run out of water. They have more water than they need. The system shuts down partway through the days most of the time because the water is, is all the tanks are full and the system just shuts down. So prior to the installing this, the farmers used to have to bring in trucked water at a tremendous expense. Having put this system in, they've eliminated all those costs, eliminated all the electrical pumping costs. The system has paid for itself in less than two years. and. Uh, they're enjoying the comforts of having all the water they need, and they have the ability to expand their operations as a result of that as well. The farm is quite profitable and doing quite well. This is also another sustainable this aspect of this. For the farm pumping. The uh, submersible pump in the pond is powered by these three panels. the three 175 watt panels. They're mounted on the roof of the chicken house. Uh, very nearby the pond. The power is fed through a controller to the pump. The pump is a variable speed pump. It uh, runs on the amount of power that's available. It's positive displacement, meaning that the pump will pump no matter how much power it gets. The, the only thing that varies is the amount of water that's being pumped at any instantaneous point in time. The, the panels are mounted on an anodized aluminum rail and held in place with clips. The clips, uh, in the event that you have to remove the panels, we're in a hurricane zone, so it's very important that the farmer be able to take them down very quickly if he needs to. With a number 10 spanner, you can just slacken off the nuts and remove the panels. In about five, 10 minutes, the panels can be pulled off the racks. The electrics, similarly, are very simple. They're plugged. They're a plug and play system where you can only connect wires in one way. So the panels can be taken down, stored away for the storm, brought back up again, and then reinstalled just as quickly. No fuss, no muss. Uh, great comfort for the farmers. And the, uh, the salt tolerant anodized aluminum is very important so that it doesn't rust over the years. Okay, now I want to uh, show you a little bit about making a very simple rain barrel. And I'll show you a little, I prepared a little thing that's it's up on YouTube. On the YouTube. Uh, university. Good morning. I'm Bob Rack and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be developing a system for collecting rainwater which comes down and oftentimes just gets sent into your backyard or what in the past where we used to put it was down into the sewer system. But since then many communities have passed regulations which require you to eliminate that added uh, water going down the sewer since it's relatively clean water. So what we're going to be building today is what's known as a rain barrel rainwater collection system so that you'll have that water collected during times of storms. I did this uh, video at the same time as I was. <laughs> as you can see here, what I have is put a 
little guide so that it directs the water away from the foundation of the house. It's one of the things, if your house isn't sealed very well and the water runs down along mm. the side of your house, you could get it going into your basement. So this puts it out and spreads it out into your backyard. And so when we look at the rainwater system, one of the things that we want to begin with is up on the roof because oftentimes material from trees and everything will fall onto your roof and wash into your gutter. So let's go up on the roof and let's go and uh, look at what we can do in order to make it a little bit better so that uh, we're not having to filter out a lot of the material when it comes down to the rain barrel. Here we are up on the roof. And as you can see... I'm not walking on air. There is a flat part of the roof. That's it. <laughs> gutter guards, which are put on to prevent material from first getting into the gutter. They'll keep leaves and seeds and things like that from falling into the gutter. And one of the ways that they go on is, you can see right here, this piece this is what it looks like so you put it on the roof so you can see it it snaps in they actually since I put these on my house they put a new modification and if you can see it there's a screen that's behind the, the heavier plastic, so that it'll even keep out some of the other smaller materials. How we install this, is you can see it slides underneath your last paneling of the roof, and then it clips. This is called a snap filter because it snaps onto your gutter. And you get a good snap on there, get a good fitting so it holds it in place. And so if you do the whole length of your gutter, well, there's a little space there. But you can see as the rainwater comes down, the heavier I mean, leaves or anything that might be coming from the area won't get trapped in your, in your gutter and then end up on your leaves. So here, the rain coming off the roof here drains down here, then comes along the edge. that piece. And then it comes down here to the drain. And then goes down. I got long arms, so I wasn't as close to the, the edge as it looks. So here's our rain barrel. And we're just going to make one. You can buy them commercially. Uh, they f tend to be fairly expensive, but this is a uh, regular heavy-duty barrel with a flat bottom, no wheels, because usually with the wheels there's an opening at the bottom and you don't want your water running out. So what we got to do is we actually have to uh, create a, a firm footing. So we have to modify this area to create the footing because this is a 32-gallon barrel, which means if it's full of 32 gallons of water, each gallon of water weighs 8.34 pounds. So that gives us a total of 267 pounds of water. So we want a very good level and sturdy foundation for this. So that's what we'll put together now. I am looking at trying to uh, create a level area for the barrel. 
we encountered some some hidden treasures here. <laughs> and here we have a lot of stone and some blocks of granite. And these can be used uh, as decorative materials throughout the yard. I have done quite a bit of work with uh, reusing materials I found in my yard. And I'll show you that in a second, give you some ideas. Yeah, this is my driveway. And as you can see, there's a lot of granite block and a lot of gravel. Again, with water management, this allows the water to drain out so it doesn't create runoff. It goes back into the ground when it comes. And all this material was actually found on my property uh, when I took over. There was a lot of, of gravel in the yard, which I collected over in one area. And also I found all these pieces of granite in various locations in the yard when I purchased the property. And so without costing anything for materials, I have a nice driveway. So let's get back to the rain barrel. So what I'm going to do here, and this is probably something that most people won't have to do, but I've got to create a level surface. So I'm going to use some of the extra gravel that I had over in my driveway, and I'm going to use it to create a level surface over here. Okay, you can see that the gravel is in place. I have some bricks into the ground over there so that they can act as a little supporting wall to keep that gravel in place where there isn't, where it's above the ground level. Okay, then we'll put the cinder blocks in place which will serve as our supports and use a level Mm -hmm. so that you can uh, be sure that you have the platform level that you're going to be putting your barrel on. Now we have our barrel in place and this gives us an idea now where we'll cut our gutter pipe to make the elbow that's going to go to the enter into the, the barrel. Okay, and then what you want to do also is fill in those blocks on the cinder blocks. As you can see, I'm using some of these bricks that I have around the area and that, that large granite block uh, to serve as a support on that side. And also I like to make use of things that I find around. <laughs> Okay, and then on the top, I filled in with gravel. I'm not going to fill it all the way because then I'm going to put some uh, leveling sand on top of that to uh, give it an even surface. Now with the leveling sand, we have a nice smooth level surface for the barrel to sit on. The next step that we have to do for our barrel is to uh, cut the existing pipe so that we can fit the elbow mm -hmm. and attachment that's going to go to the rain barrel. Mm -hmm. And I selected one of these flexible couplings, the air and flexible elbows. That's one thing that's uh, pretty forgiving if you made some this is what it looks like here, so you can bend it any shape, you can stretch it out, you know, get it to whatever and length you want. So in the event that you want to uh, expand later on or do some modifications, you don't have to change it because this can extend out 55 inches, it can bend in any direction, so it makes a good, uh, good choice for this application. So what you're going to need to cut this existing gutter 
is just any hacksaw that you can use with you know, the nature of the blade cutting metal and then we'll cut it to the desired length that we want. Okay, so now with the hacksaw you can make a nice clean cut on there. Uh, it looks like we have to, we'll have to evict the fellow in there. A little spider who's made a nice home. Okay, then we'll have to remove that bracket and then we can attach the pipe to it. Okay, so now we have our elbow in place to go to the barrel. And now it's time to go down to the workshop and we have to put some of the uh, touches on the rain barrel to repair that, to get it ready uh, to accept this drain and also uh, to get it prepared so that we can put a faucet on it to get water out of the bottom and also an overflow pipe so in case it fills uh, mm -hmm. it'll flow out of there and we can direct it where we want it to mm -hmm. flow. Okay one of the things that we're going to make is uh, we are going to make a filter just in case things do bypass the uh, filters that are on the gutter and things get down there. We want to capture the materials and we want to make it out of something that we can pick up and take out of the uh, take out of the barrel cover. And so, so it's just a simple flower pot a simple with pot. some holes drilled into it. And what we'll do is drill holes in it. You can buy expensive filters but this will work just fine. And what we'll do is drill some holes like that into it. Okay, so after you're done making the holes, you get a nice filter there. That'll catch your leaves or sticks or anything and keep it out of your water. And then this can just pop out. Okay, right here is what we see is some of the hardware that we're going to use. And uh, we have our faucet, which would be at the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> And then we have our overflow valve, which would be at the top. We also have some O-rings and some homemade gaskets uh, so that we can uh, make sure that we have a, a watertight seal. Okay, so we make a hole in there with a one inch speed bore hole cutter. See the hole right there. And there you can see that we have an O ring and then the gasket on that. And then we'll put that into here. And then we will do the same thing. And those are brass fittings. So they, they don't corrode, they last for a long time. And then we'll attach it to the outlet. What's the gas to the So here we can see. That's a, just a rubber, simple rubber. On this side. And then the fitting with the O-ring and the gasket on that side. And we put the rubber gasket and an O-ring on this side. And then screw on it. Oh, oh. Tighten it. And now we get a good good seal on it. Then we attach another union right here, and now this can attach to a garden hose. So if we want to attach that on there. 
You can also use that to attach to another barrel if you have multiple yeah, barrels. So you can see the outlet at the top, the overflow, mm -hmm. and now we're going to attach the faucet down at the bottom so that we can drain the tank. Okay, so now after we drill the hole, we attach the faucet down there. There's a little segment here I didn't think, think I had it on. <laughs> so, so. I'm not sure on here if you can speed. Oh, here. let's see. Send the hole to get started and the uh, way out so that we can cut the whole circle. Okay, and then we have our hole cut. Then we take our drain, put it right in there, and it makes a nice snug fit in there. concerned about is anytime you'll have standing water, it's particularly in some areas you have the opportunity for mosquitoes to come in. So a little added feature that I want to put on here is it's going to be a little tight sealing top where the water spout will come and attach in here and then it'll go down over the, uh, the the drain and it. So just to speed that up a little bit, that's just one of the things that you'd, oops, yeah, that's right. <laughs> one of the things that you'd have on your roof, it's actually used to attach, uh, to put on when you have your vents coming off the roof to keep water from leaking. So it, it makes a good seal on there. You can see it doesn't, doesn't come off and it's a nice tight seal and then it goes right on top of this, like this, so now you have a, a good seal that keeps any bugs or anything from, from getting in there. And in this way we won't be... Here we can see our rain barrel in place, we have the overflow up at the top, which also could be used if you want as a drain to a second barrel if you want to have multiple barrels. So once one barrel fills, it fills into another barrel. And, and now also with that drain, again, to keep insects and things from uh, going in there, 
You can put a little screen, just a little window screen or so on there. It allows air to go in so that the tank opens and closes all right, and it, but it prevents insects. It allows the water to come out, but it prevents insects from going inside. And then we have a little mosquito seal. Here you can see I've cut the end off. And now I have a round end. And now I have to trim this so that it can accept that material, that piece into this seal. This is actually for a vent up on a roof mm -hmm. to keep it. That. And now we'll just put this into place. Appearance. So I took all those rocks that I dug up the, and put it around it. Uh, the little chute that's there and directs the water away uh, into the yard. So there you have it. And here's the rain barrel. Here's the view from the other side. Well, you can see the spigot also with a little area there that you can, uh, there's some brick. And of course you want to make it up a little bit so you can put a bucket underneath there or whatever, the uh, spout, so that you can drain it. On the ground there, there's two other bricks so you have a little place to put something if you want it to fill it with water. And then with the water from your rain barrel, you can use it to water your plants, to grow some healthy vegetables, and harvest a nice crop. If you're not coming off an asphalt roof. <laughs> I have to use mine for landscaping, I can't use it. And so basically that's the uh, information about the, the rain barrels. If uh, it's time if anybody has any questions, or if you want to take a look at at this, I can put it right up here, and you can see this is a, oh, let me put the lights on. <laughs> so it's a very simple thing that doesn't take long to make, and you can, you know, collect the rainwater, it comes in here. This end, I had to drain my barrel to bring it in today. So we have the, uh, here's your filter, and it does work. It does collect a lot of material in there because uh, it does bypass some of that other stuff. And then you can just take that, dump it out, put it in there, and then put this back on. And it's, here's your, your overflow right there, and right there you have your faucet. And this, this allows you to, uh, this particular faucet, I can hook a hose up to it. And then I can, you know, what I do is I run the hose up to where I want to and I just open it up and, and let it drain to wherever it wants to go, you know. And then the overflow can go. And again, that overflow, you can make the barrels bigger, whatever you'd like. Yep. Okay, now comes Lincoln. I just open it up and let it drain and that's it. That's it. I leave it out all winter and uh, so, and just keep the spigot open 
So just in case it's a warm time and it rains, it doesn't hold any water inside. Yeah. In this area, we don't have much of a water issue like we do in the west in Menard County and so on. But have you encountered any uh, town regulations or any restrictions oh, on yeah. collecting rainwater? Yeah. Not necessarily in Fall River, but in the surrounding towns, Swansea and Westport, and they've they've had uh, water bans and stuff in the time where they they can't you know, use the water to uh, la water their lawns or anything. That's why in uh, Swansea, because of the, the water situation, they built the first desalinization plant. It's the first publicly owned desalinization plant in the country. And it's, it's pretty much set to, to go online. There's just a few things getting the, the pipeline but hooked up. But you don't up. find restrictions on collecting your own rainwater here? No. No one, there are in the West. I haven't. In Colorado, it's illegal to collect your own rainwater. Really? I mean, it's going into the ground. Anyway, you're just sort of delaying it for a little bit. But yeah, you cannot collect rainwater really? on your house. But I, you know, that's an extremely different situation than here. But you haven't yeah. any problems with actually collecting rainwater in terms of health or sanitation or water? No, because I, I just use mine for Right. You know, washing around the yard, watering the plants, the water would have gone there anyway. So it's, uh, I haven't had any, any problems and my plants have grown very well, so. <laughs> yeah. Could you put any screen in the little, in the green pot face? Uh, yeah, you could if you want. I haven't because you just have to, uh, you know, you want to watch out that it doesn't get clogged. too clogged up because with the fine screen, you could put a, you know, there's, there's different levels of screen that you could, could put in there. And uh, this seems to trap the biggest stuff, the leaves and everything, and the, some of like the maple seeds and stuff that, that go down there, it, it catches on, on there. But you can, you could actually take this and get another pot similar to this and cut a kind of frame out of it and put some net on it and just pop it in there. And then when you want it, you just take it out and, you know, just check it periodically. So you can make that a finer, Find a screen. You can, you can be as creative as you like. You know, it's, it's your baby. <laughs> Do you get a, a good amount of pressure when the, the water is coming from the spigot if you hook it to a hose? Uh, there's a little bit. There's not not a lot of pressure because that's not a very big mm. big area. <laughs> if you wanted pressure, you know, you could actually, you know, if you had a few. I, I've seen somewhere they've taken those. Uh, Kind of like those, uh, it's a square metal bin that's inside a cage and put them on top of each other and then connected them. As long as they're all a continuous level of water, then you get that pressure value of the, the whole thing and you'll, you'll be able to uh, get a good amount of pressure that you have on there. But it doesn't, it doesn't give a lot of pressure, but you know, I, you don't need, you know, for what I'm doing. I don't need a lot of pressure. We used to collect rainwater on, a, and we put it up on a rack that was just below the eaves, so that the barrels, and we had them in a series of, I think, eight connected, like you mentioned, how you can connect them. Yeah. But they were up high, and that gave a nice water column. Yeah. So that we had reasonably good pressure uh, from essentially the height of the house. It depends on where you're located. You might not want to have something like that on your house. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, this was a, a working building, so it wasn't so much of a issue. Yep. And some people, very well. some people put them underground, like you saw that, that other guy. That guy was in Colorado, that, yeah. that, that first thing. It sounded like it. So, uh, but they, uh, yeah, there's, there's uh, some uh, like commercial buildings will put these cisterns underground and collect a lot of, a lot of rainwater that they can uh, reuse. So it's a, uh, you know, it's a way in the summertime that, you know, you never have to worry. So what about if you wanted to, if the Astro um, tiles like you have, was there an easy way to clean it, the water enough to just water the, the plants? To clean it? Well, you, you can get some, some system because you're mainly interested in some of the organics that leach off the, out of the, that asphalt tiles because it is like an oil-based material. Uh, well, it'll get in your yard. You may not necessarily get to your garden 
from where it is because if it's raining. But if you, you could put filters on there, you know, activated carbon things would remove some of that material and, and one, stuff. One of the techniques we use was a pre-flush. Um, yeah. And so what that does is you calculate how much roof area you thought so that like, the first half inch of rain is diverted away from the barrels. And that goes up. And until that fills up and you make a yep. vertical column of like four or five inch PVC pipe. And when that fills up, then the overflow goes into your rain barrel. But what that means is the first flush off the roof, all the bird droppings and the leaves and loose stuff that's collected since the last rainfall, dust and everything, go is diverted into that side yep. tube first. And then the cleanest water after that goes into the rain barrels that we're going to use. But you know, that's it. You don't need to worry about bird droppings and dust if you're watering your garden because that's all nutritious, you know, yep. fertilizer in a way. But we were using it for domestic water. How much uh, how much do you think that whole system would cost? Well, <laughs> I think the whole thing cost me, I'd say it wasn't more than maybe $80, if that. You know, so I, some of the more expensive things were the brass fittings <laughs> that were on there. And towns often so. sometimes get a subsidized price of $30 or $40 of ready to go ranger. Yeah. Not without the town spot connection, but everything else. So, but it's a nice. You know, Saturday morning activity. Uh, you can make one and uh, get it ready pretty quick. So do you get like a cut on, on your taxes, property taxes, because you have this? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's a cut in the water bill, you know, that because, uh, you know, you're not, because right now when we think of our water bill, you pay for what you get with water, plus you also pay for it to go down the sewer. And it's actually more expensive to send it down the sewer than how it what it costs to come from the water that comes. But if you, you have know, a well, yeah. and you also have to pay to have the power to yeah. get the water out of the well, and if you treat your water, then the greater volume of treated water, you add salt or whatever to your water softener, or whatever you do add, so that uh, this the yard water then is untreated. Yeah. <coughs> and it's free. <laughs> In the Midwest, do they preclude uh, four hot water heating systems that uh, store water in the closed system? Because you didn't mention that you know we have air conditioners, we have four hot water systems, uh, we have uh, you know automobiles for coolant. That's all trapped water that's not available. Uh, to uh, potable water. So we do that 2% that you mentioned. It's, uh, it's less than 2 because a lot of that 2% is trapped. Yeah, it's only about a half a percent that's actually, 2% is in the ice, yeah. although that's changing. You know? <laughs> yes. The sustainability becomes more and more important. Yeah, I saw an interesting thing where they were, I was reading a Time article and they said one of the good things about global warming, that's one of the benefits of global warming has been that it's melted the ice and made more area available for drilling for oil. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Interesting concept there. <laughs> it also provides another market for the reflective mylar to put over the areas where the reflective uh, polar cap yep, has, has gone. Uh, gone melted so that we don't become uh, uh, a Venus or, yep. uh, uh, and have uh, the more energy coming in and not reflected back out uh, and have that greater again, greenhouse effect. Because we're getting a positive feedback yeah. because as the water, the ice melts, the water absorbs more of the heat. Yeah. More of the ice melts, more of the heat gets absorbed. And, and you have to reflect back that yeah. extra radiation. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you very much.